There was another program that we wrote previously that could be enhanced nicely by using functions. And this was a piece of code that we wrote when we were demonstrating nested ifs. And so we can copy that into here. And what it actually does is it calculates concession costs. So I'll call it concessions. And so you might recall this, it read in what we were ordering and the size, and then it went through a set of ifs, you know, to make this so it actually would be an intelligent thing to do. I'm going to uh, change it so combos would actually save you some money here. This code right here would make a very nice function. Once again, it's something that might be reusable. And in fact, that's what we should aim for when we're writing functions. You should try to make functions that are going to be useful, possibly in many places in the current program, possibly across multiple programs. Okay, the broader you can make it as far as applicability goes, the more useful it will be to you in the long run. So I'm actually going to take these lines at the top that were reading the values and I'm going to move them down here. Now I could, so we're going to go ahead and let's def calc concession cost and I want to pass in two things. I'm already using the variable names order and size so I'm going to stick with that so that I don't have to change them and because they seem like meaningful names to me. And this is going to return to us a double. Okay. This could use some formatting and it also has an error in it. We'll come back to that in just a second. I want to go ahead and make it so that we use this function. Calc concession cost of order and size. And to highlight something that was mentioned before, I'm actually going to change the names of these two variables to just O and S to make it clear that the arguments that I pass in do not have to match the formal parameters. Okay. Now this has an error in it and I'm going to leave it there because I think that it is one that many students are likely to come across uh, and you need to know how to interpret this. It says type mismatch found unit required double. Okay, well you might look and you're like well I have a whole bunch of numbers here these are all doubles okay, why is it unhappy? And the reason here is because remember the curly brace the value of a curly brace is determined by the last thing in it well in this case this has a really big if in it but that if is part of a val the val does not give us back a value so one way to fix this would just be to put price down here at the end that way price is the last thing that appears there and oh, apparently the there are ways, oh yep, I, I see what that is. <laughs> this is an interesting thing that we didn't get to with our previous code because we weren't really caring about the type that was coming in here. It turns out this isn't how I want to handle this anyway. What I'd rather do is I would rather just put the if inside of here. And then because all of this is inside of curly braces, I'm going to indent the whole thing. Okay. Now, this error message over here, so we got rid of one error message was that it found unit and required double. Now it says found any val and required double. And the reason why this is happening is because of the fact that I have an if here. Okay. So I have the case for the small, the medium, and the large, S, M, and L. What would happen though if I did combo and for size I gave it Z. Well that doesn't match this, it doesn't match this, and it doesn't match this. Which means that this if expression inside of here in the case of a Z doesn't give you back anything which happens to be unit and that's what's causing us a problem here. There are two ways to fix that. 
one would be I go ahead and I add an else and I make it so that if you enter an invalid size we're going to return zero okay? and since giving an invalid food type returns zero basically if this returns zero that means that you messed something up the other way to do this would have been to get rid of the if for the large and make it so if it's not a small or a medium it defaults to a large so it would just say else and then give the price of the large. You can choose how you wish to do that. It really depends upon whether you think that large should be the default size. But once we do that, we can run this. It's sitting there and just waiting for me. If I do food, medium, I get 2.5 as my answer. By the way, this is exactly why it's recommended that you put the return type on things. If I had left this off, Scala would have been perfectly happy without these else zeros. In fact, I can demonstrate that to you. I will come back and undo these changes because I actually like it with the return type. Now, when I run this, food, medium, it still runs. The difference is that the calc concession cost does not always give us back a double. Sometimes it gives us back a unit. And in fact, we can demonstrate that. If I run it again and I do food and a size of Z, you'll note what it prints out. The open and close parentheses, which is the one uh, value of type unit. So I actually really prefer this version here because it is much more type safe. And by having this colon unit here, Scala was able to tell us that we had messed something up inside of our if statements here, which isn't unusual. This was a fairly large, complex if statement, so it, it wasn't hard to mess it up. The other thing that I note about this is that my read lines and my print line are not inside of this function. If this calc concessions were to be doing a read line inside of it, it would actually limit me. It would limit what this function could be used for. I would have to be using this function when I expected the user to give us some input. If I had been pulling the data from some other source, and over time you will learn how to pull from files, from databases, from network connections, I could get the data from lots of different places, and then this function would have been useless if it had had a read line inside of it. Similarly, note that all of these just give us back a value. They don't say print this value. Once again, that is more useful to us. Because we actually gave back a value, if I had some other cost instead of just the concessions, maybe a ticket cost, I can take those and add them together. Whereas once you print the value, it went to the screen, but then you can't do anything with it. So in many ways, the ideal functions, unless they are specifically supposed, unless they are specifically functions that are reading from the user or printing to the user, your ideal functions have neither reads nor prints. And that makes them far more general and it makes them so that you can use them in more situations.